got a sweet haircut. Nice. I'm back. Now, it's also cold out there today. It's like it's almost June and it's like flannel cold. What the heck's going on? All right, here we go. Now, we all know that we have mentioned what a vector is previously. A vector, is, but that we're going to like go into vectors like blah, today is all about vectors. So if we were meeting today, we'd be talking about vectors, how to do vector analysis, in other words, how to solve a vector problem in terms of vectors at straight lines, vectors at right angles, vectors at non-right angles. So we got to do vector, vector, vector. What's your vector, vector? Anyone? Anyone? Clarence, Clarence. Roger, Roger. Airplane. Yes, airplane. Nice. Okay, here we go. A vector. It's a, re it's a quick review of what a vector is. A vector is a number with, a, or a measurement, I should say, with a direction. So vector versus scalar. Scalar. Scalar is just a number. And so sometimes you'll be doing a problem and it'll be a a velocity problem. We just finished up kinematics last week, and so um, you know you're trying to calculate the velocity of somebody moving along at this acceleration for this amount of time. And many times though, they'll ask you to solve for the velocity, but the magnitude of the velocity only. They only want the magnitude of the velocity. Well, why are they saying they want the magnitude of the? What does that mean? Magnitude means the number. Scalar means the number. And if you are talking about Velocity, velocity as we have learned, is a vector. So typically, if you want to know the velocity, you not only have to know the how many meters per second is traveling, but also what direction it's going. But a lot of times problems will just say, find the magnitude of the velocity. And the reason they're doing that, they don't care about the direction in that problem. I just want that number value that goes along with the solution. And that's what we were doing last week. We were calculating the velocity values um, you calculate the, the speed values in meters per second of a velocity. So we are calculating the magnitude of a vector. So that's when you say magnitude. So some examples of scalar and vector. Well, we've done this already in terms of speed and velocity. All right, so speed and velocity. Speed is just a number. Your speedometer tells you how many miles per hour you're going. Speed. Velocity would be how many miles per hour, or what we should be doing in physics is meters per second, in a particular direction. Okay, so those are examples of scalar versus uh, a vector. But there's another one that's important. Okay? Another one that's important, and that is displacement. Displacement. That is a vector. It's the vector version of distance. So an odometer tells you how many miles you've traveled. So if you look at your odometer and you head out on the highway and you look at your odometer again 10 minutes later and you've traveled 10 miles, the odometer tells you how many miles or the distance you've traveled. That's a scalar value. The odometer will tell you what direction you're going. So if you knew you traveled 10 miles north, that would be a displacement because it has the direction associated with it. So it's a vector. But one more thing about displacement. It also is going to be a distance you've traveled in a direction as the crow flies. As the crow flies, you've heard that. Yes, you have. That means in a straight line. So let's say that you live in Smallville. That's you. Your name's Clark. Smallville, your name's Clark. If you don't get it, too bad. Look it up. So you live in Smallville, your name is Clark Kent, and you want to drive to Big City because Smallville is boring. You know, it's Friday night, so you want to get in the car and you want to drive to Big City. And you get in the car and you start out. And you pull in to Big City. Small bill, big city. Your odometer might say you've traveled 100 miles, but that's not your displacement. Even though you've traveled in a north, this would be northeast, kind of a northeast direction, you couldn't say, uh, my displacement's 100 miles, kind of northeast. Well, kind of is not good enough for one thing, and this is not as the crow flies. So 100 miles might be because you did all of this, but maybe you actually only traveled 60 miles so in a straight line. So displacement is 
how far you travel, in what direction, with a straight line from where you were and then to where you ended up. Is it possible to have a display, to travel a thousand miles and have a displacement of nothing? Yes, it is. You could travel out and go in a circle for a thousand miles, come exactly back to where you started, or maybe you want to chug a chug a chug a chug, choo choo, chug a chug a chug a chug, choo choo, 500 miles this way and then 500 miles in reverse, and you've traveled a thousand miles but have no displacement. So it is possible to have no displacement even though you've moved if you're back to where you started. All right, some other important factors we will get into, not in this unit, are force, actually acceleration is a vector, I should put that up here, acceleration. I mean, these are the big three when it comes to uh, movement, the velocity, acceleration, and displacement or distance that we've traveled. So those big three, and then force is a displacement and momentum is a displacement, uh, a displacement, a vector, force and Momentum are vectors. Um, so those are, but we'll get into those later in the course. Okay. So for now, today, we have to go through how to solve vector problems. Now, they're different than kinematic problems and that vectors need that direction associated with them. So let's say that you are you're in a boat. And it's a rowboat. And you got a couple of oars in the water here. And you're row, row, rowing your boat gently down the stream. Okay. So let's say that on your piece of paper or on the board, north is going to be at the top of the paper or at the top of the board. That's north, south, east is to the right on your paper, same thing, to the right, and west is to the left. All right, now, let's say you're rowing down the stream and you're rowing um, with a velocity of two meters per second. So in other words, if you were in a lake and there was no current, you're rowing with enough power and force to generate two meters per second worth of speed here. So let's say you're doing that. But now we have a current rowing down the stream. We all know that going downstream means you're being carried by the current, yeah? Downstream is actually a way of stating a direction. If we were standing next to a stream and I said, hey, let's travel upstream, you would know which way that is. You look at the current and you go, okay, opposite way. So up, upstream, downstream are actually ways you can state a direction. Okay, so let's say we're going downstream and the stream itself is moving at two meters per second. So the stream is moving to the right, because we're traveling down the stream, at two meters per second. You're rowing at a velocity of two meters per second downstream. Notice I said a velocity of two meters per second downstream so we attach the direction to it, that's a vector. Then if I'm over here, and that's you rowing, then I would see you moving, how fast would I see you moving? Okay, I would see you moving at four meters per second. We have, I gave you a video that you were supposed to watch on relative frames of reference. So from my frame of reference, I'm here over on the side of the, the stream, I would see you moving with a combination of those two velocities two meters per second downstream. So there you are. Now you might, you might have blindfold on and you don't know that there's a current. You don't know that. You're rowing along. From your frame of reference, you say, yeah, I'm just moving at two meters per second. That's it. That's all I got. Because you don't realize that you're being carried along with the stream and with an additional two meters per second. Okay, let's say you get tired of rowing downstream. Or maybe you forgot your lunch. You gotta turn around and go, no, your cell phone, you forget your cell phone, okay? Yeah, you know you're going back for that. Maybe not the launch, but the cell phone, definitely. You turn around. You turn around and you start rowing upstream. So let's see. Rowing upstream. And you row at two meters per second. Let's say once again you've got the blindfolds on. And so you're rowing and you go, oh, I forgot my cell phone. <laughs> And you start rowing up the stream. Now, again, you don't know that you're in a stream because you have blindfolds on. And maybe you have earmuffs on, too, so you don't hear any water running. Okay. What would I see you doing? That's right. I'd be laughing at you. Because I would see you not moving at all. Because now what's happening is you've turned around, so I'm going to reverse your arrow, and you're going against the same velocity current 
as you're applying up the stream. You're not going anywhere. Okay, now you feel like you're moving because you don't realize that you're in a stream. But I can see you moving with nothing overall, nothing. These two would cancel each other out. You would just sitting there going, rank, 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 rank. and I'd be going, <laughs> okay? I'm not that mean, I wouldn't laugh. I'd help you, I'd help you. Okay. Um, I don't know how, but I would. All right, now, we just did vector problems. We just did dos vector problems grande. We did a vector problem where the two vectors, and a vector problem is going to have two, two vectors or more, two or three, four, five vectors. Um, so you have to have two to have a vector problem. We did them going in the same direction, stream, rowing, same direction. And what did we do mathematically? Mathematically, we added the two vectors together. So when we are going downstream, so here's something you know. You know something about vectors. You do. You know that if vectors are pointing in the same direction, <clears throat> mathematically, you add them. All right? <coughs> okay. You also know something else. We solve the second vector problem. You know vectors pointing at each other, you subtract them. See? You know how to solve vector problems. Yes, you do. So vectors, <coughs> vectors pointing in the same direction, mathematically you add them. Opposite direction, mathematically you subtract them. All right, we're doing vector math. That's pretty easy, right? Yeah, in fact, if you ever fly across the United States, so you fly from Boston to the West Coast, pick your West Coast city of choice. Um, if you ever look at flight times, like time that you're in the air, I'm not talking about time zone difference. I'm talking about the amount of time that you're actually in the aircraft. Going over to the west coast, back to the east coast. Are they the same amount of flight time? No. You know that. You know, well, most of you probably, maybe some of you don't. Most of you know that if you're going across to the west coast, it takes longer in the air than it does on the way back. And that's because of the prevailing westerly winds that go across the United States from California to the East Coast. And that gives you a push. It's like a vector problem. If you're going against the headwind, it's like the vector problem going upstream. You subtract those two vectors. It takes you longer. If you have that headwind, okay, those two vectors woo, 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 push you along. That vector pushes you along. Those two vectors you add. So you see, you do know something about vector problems already. Okay. But here is the problem. We all know that in real life, IRL for all us cool kids, we know that vectors don't always go head to head like that or line up from behind like that. They don't always do that. Matter of fact, the vast majority of the time, they don't do that. So what if we had a vector problem like this? Let's say I'm flying in a plane and I'm traveling due north, straight north, north as north can go. I'm go I wanna go see Santa Claus. I'm, gonna, I'm, in, I'm in my aircraft, I'm in this little propeller-driven aircraft, and I'm moving at, let's say, a nice leisurely 100 meters per second, to be a little over 200 miles an hour. So I'm traveling north at 100 meters per second. There's a strong crosswind. Crosswind, yeah, that means coming from the side. And let's say the crosswind is out of the west. Out of the west. Out of the west means from the west heading east. So from the west heading east. And let's say it's a strong crosswind of uh, 30 meters per second. That's over 16 miles an hour, okay? That's some serious stuff. So we got a crosswind, and I'll draw this vector to represent that crosswind. Now notice what I'm doing here. I am drawing my vectors to scale. Vectors are represented by arrows. They point in the direction that you're going. So if I'm going north, the arrow has north. The wind's going out of the west to the east, the arrow points east. In the last problems, I had my arrows drawn in the directions of rowing up and downstream and the person in the boat. And I, I try to draw those two meter per second arrows the same size. So I'm drawing these to scale. That's important. It's important to draw them to scale. It's going to help you visualize what's happening. And there's actually a solution method that involves drawing them to scale. And that's called the graphical solution method. Um, today, we're just focusing on mathematical solutions, but we will go over that 
graphical solution. But it's still important to draw these to scale, even if I'm solving them mathematically. That way I can see that I'm, how I'm doing and what they're going to look like and kind of get, make a guess whether or not my, my answer is correct. Okay, so what do I do? There are some what I call vector guidelines. I won't say rules because of you rebellious teenagers I might have in class and you know how angsty you are and you don't like rules. So, guidelines. Some guidelines for you are with vectors. All right, this is vector math. So, guidelines. Not rules. Guidelines of vectoros. Vectoros is Italian for vectors. I wouldn't make that up. I'm fluent in many languages. All right, guideline number one. Draw vectors head to tail. Well, actually, draw vectors head to tail. Um, well, we should always draw vectors head and tail. Okay. No, stop. Back to the truck. Add vectors head and tail. Draw vectors with an arrow that represents the direction of motion. That should have been my first guideline, but we kind of already went over that. Okay, so add vectors head and tail. That's what I should put here. Add, not, not draw. Add. I was combining two things at once in my head, and it wasn't working out very well. Add your vectors head to tail. And what does that mean, add your vectors head to tail? Well, this is the head of the vector, and that's the tail of this vector. I mean, it's like an arrow. This would be your arrow head, and these would be the tail feathers, okay, if they had any tail feathers on there. So add your vectors head to tail. And what, is that, what are you talking about, add your vectors head to tail? We have to connect these. We have to connect these. Let's go back to row, row, rowing your boat. Remember down the stream? We were moving at two meters per second downstream, and then we had the stream of two meters per second. I right, kind of make those about even. That's pretty good, I guess. That would represent rowing down the stream at two meters per second in a two meter per second stream. So I added these two vectors head to tail. See the head to tail connection? Then what I'm gonna do is draw the answer, draw the, actually it's called the resultant. The answer is called the resultant. Draw the resultant. Resultant. Now it's the answer. Head to head. Tail to tail. Draw the resultant head to head, tail to tail. That's exactly what I just did. Now the resultant is going to be after I add the vectors head to tail, I'm going to draw the resultant in here. Tail to tail, head to head. Now, technically, what I should be doing, if I'm following my guidelines correctly, is I should be drawing this result. And the black arrow is the answer. That, that's the actual overall velocity of the person rowing down the stream. This is the answer. It's a result. And we knew the result was four meters per second because when they're back to back like that, right behind each other, we mathematically just simply add the numbers up. This is... I mean, I should, what I should do is just drop right on top of those two red arrows. But then it gets all kind of messy, so I don't like doing that. So I like to draw. If I have a straight line answer like this for two straight vectors, I just like to pull it maybe off to the bottom or up to the top, just a little bit offset, so I can see the two arrows that made the answer. So here's what we've got. Add the vectors head to tail. I did that. I connected these two vectors head to tail. Second, draw the result. Head to head, tail to tail. Tail to tail, head to head. So my answer has the, the resultant head, that's the answer, drawn right next to that head of this arrow and the tail drawn right next to the tail of that arrow. I did it. All right, now, let's quickly do the opposite. Remember I went upstream? Remember I row, row, rowed our boat gently up the stream and I laughed at you? You remember, say you're still hurt. I'm sorry, okay, I apologize. I didn't mean to laugh. Actually, I did, it was kind of funny. So you were going this way. No, you were going this way. You turned around. So the, the stream is still going that, in that direction. The stream is still going to the right, but you decided to turn around. So I'm going to add the vectors head to tail. So what I'm going to do is draw the stream here in your rowing motion here. And I've connected head to tail, head to tail, 
those two vectors. What's the resultant? Draw the resultant head to head, tail to tail. The answer is I can't draw a result for this. You see here, this, the tail of this vector, I call it an open. It's open, nothing else is connected to it. The head of this vector is open. There's nothing else connected to it. Here, I had a head to tail connection. That's not open because the head and the tail of those two vectors are connected. Once I've drawn the result in 10, I drew this result head to head, tail to tail. That head is now taken up. This tail spot, spots here are taken up. Here, I have no spot to draw a result because there's a head to tail connection and a head to tail connection. Once you have a head to tail connection, that, that spot's closed. Closed. Can't do anything with it. There's nowhere to draw a result. Now we know the answer is zero. Okay, we know that. So that shows the answer is zero because there's no way I can draw a result in there. Here I could draw a result from the tail of this one to the head of this one. Here I can't. The answer is zero. All right, take a look. Let's go back now to this problem here. The problem I have here is a right triangle I'm gonna set up. Now you can see, you can see the right triangle is gonna happen here. Add the vectors head to tail. Right now I've drawn them. I've drawn them to scale in the right direction. That's 100, so that represents 30. But I haven't connected them yet. You have to add them. One's got to be moved in place and connected to the other one. It doesn't make any difference who you move. It's irrelevant. I can take this one and move it over and connect it to this one. I can take this one and move it over and connect it to this one. Doesn't matter. Say so I want to take this one and move it. Now, the other thing you have is choice. There's America. You've got choice in America. You can take this and move it here. That will put the tail of that vector to the head of this vector. You can't put it here. Well, why not? You said it's America and I got choice. Yeah, but you see, that would be a head-to-head -head connection. If I move this one here, I would have a head-to-head -head connection. Wrong. Add vectors head to tail. So that's not the right location. I'd have to move this here if I want to connect it to the top. Now you could move it down here. You can move this vector here and connect it head to tail there. That's fine. That also will work. It's a head to tail connection, head to tail connection. There's always two correct solutions to a vector problem. In a two-problem vector problem, there are two correct solutions when you have things at angles, not straight lines. When there's straight lines, there's only one answer. That's it. You're going four or you're going zero. Okay, here at a triangle we're going to make, we always have two uh, possible solutions to set up our triangle. Now, uh, Billy, what do you want to do? Do you want to go, um, solve this problem with the vector on the top or the bottom? What do you think, Billy? Top. Okay, Billy, good choice, top. So we're going to keep this vector up top okay, and solve the problem now. Now, this 100 is going to be in the way, so I'm going to move it. Put it out here. Okay. So now I've connected this vector to the top. I've connected correctly because I've added the two vectors head to tail. Draw the result, the answer, head to head, tail to tail. What do you mean? You can see it's going to be a triangle, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And that makes a triangle. A right triangle, in fact, not a wrong one, a right triangle. Head to head, draw the result in head to head, tail to tail. So that's the tail of my answer here. The head of the answer here goes head to head, tail to tail. And I now have a triangle resulting in the answer for how my aircraft, remember it's the plane, is going to move. It's going to move up and over to the right because it's being pushed by the wind. Okay, that makes sense, right? Um, so, yeah, or if you were rowing across the stream, across the stream, remember we were going up a stream, downstream. If you decided to move across the stream, you would be pushed downstream. It's a combination of both you rowing and going downstream. Same thing here. Combination of the plane engine moving the plane north and the wind blowing it to the east. So we get this northeast-ish direction for our answer. Okay, now this video is almost 25 minutes. I don't like videos this long. They take forever to load. So I'm going to stop it and we'll pick it up on the flip side.